still in the initiative uh, movement and combat phase, so the next segment is exploitation movement. So the initiative player, that's the non-allied side, can perform exploitation movement, which means any of their units that are not in a zone of control may move up to their full movement allowance. Um, so I'd love to be able to move these guys a little bit, but um, they are in an enemy zone of control. Let's go up north and see if there's anything we want to do up there. I believe there is. Um, so we got this guy out here. He's not an enemy zone of control. It's motorized. You see the two little dots representing wheels, I suppose. Motorized units. I'm looking on the terrain chart. That's flat woods. So it's like the clear flat terrain with little trees drawn on it. Um, it costs two. Uh, they have six movement. This, this, besides just the NATO icon, this um, orange colored in a circle movement, it, you know, the circle represents a tire as well, I suppose, uh, indicates motorized movement. So, you know, maybe they want to start positioning themselves to uh, attack somewhere else. Um, maybe they'll just go, uh, well, maybe they'll just group up with this guy for starters um, and go one, two. Three, four, and then when you enter an enemy zone of control, you have to pay one, so five. Uh, I could have reduced that a little. I could go one, two, and then take the road for half of, a third of a movement point. Looks like that's a highway, actually. No, that's a primary road, so half a movement point. Uh, so I could have gone uh, one, two, two and a half. Three and a half for the zone of control, whatever. Okay, we'll just pack in there. I'm sort of anticipating like eventually these guys will fall, these guys will come down here, and I'll get some more attacks here, but we'll see. Um, these guys, I'd love to move them, but I can't. Let's move this armored unit up here. It's wounded, but uh, you know, we want to get it into the fray here. What's our stacking situation here? You can stack up to four stacking points, except for in certain extreme terrains like high mountains and stuff. We got one, two, three stacking points. So I could actually fit that armor into this stack if I wanted to, and I kind of do. So it's half a movement point along a primary road, so one. Um, maybe I should tuck into here. That'd be two, three. Um, flat woods for mechanized is two. So uh, that was like one, two, three. Four, five, six for zone of control. I think we're gonna do that. Six for zone of control. Why am I going here instead of stacking with these guys? Remember, there's attack bonuses for um, having attackers in three or four hexes or five or six hexes. Yeah, so I like that uh, mechanized. Besides, just knowing an, the NATO armor symbol indicates it's a mechanized unit. Um, the number is in an oval, indicating the tank treads, I suppose and has a red number. Okay, this guy here, he's also mechanized. Hey, we can get another situation here. He's gonna come right up here. He's gonna pay two, it's one to go into flat, and then one to enter a zone of control from these guys. We now got, we now have them uh, four attacking hexes, not that that's better than three, but there's now a zone of control from the Russians here and here. So if these guys try to retreat, they'll be retreating through an enemy zone of control. So let's get in a little serious here. Uh, this guy and this, there's no zone of control projected across here because there's like this lake type thing here. These guys up here, they're not in an enemy zone of control, but I think they're just gonna sit tight. They're wounded. Um, yeah, we'll just have them sit tight. We're still in the initiative movement and combat phase, so the Russians are running amok. Um, the next segment's exploitation combat segment. Any unit, may conduct combat. Um, so the Russians get another attack. When I say Russians, I also mean Belarusians. They get another attack this turn. Um, unlike in a lot of games where, you know, one side goes and then the other side goes. Um, however, this is during, this is exploitation movement they're doing. They're like exploiting the results of the prior combat. And so they can only attack at a, they get a, min uh, a column shift to the left, uh, Two column shifts, I should say, to the left. So maybe because it's more hasty or whatever, they are gonna would be attacking at a penalty. 
but I think there's enough power here that that might be sufficient to uh, or tolerable maybe is the better word. So let's check this out. Okay, Fritz, let's uh, we're gonna attack here. There's a slight chance I'll call it off if I calculate this stuff up and it, it's horrible. But um, you know, let's just get an eyeball on these things. So the attackers would be coming in with 15, 18, uh, 24, 27 to 6. Uh, yeah, that's 4 to 1 with, cha with change. Yeah, let's, let's do this. Let's pick some lead units. Uh, the French are going to lead this time. And uh, this guy will lead again. They cancel each other out, so there's no column shifts for that. Um, that 4 to 1 column, sh the odds that I said, well, we have to shift it to 2 to the left for because of this is exploitation combat. Um, artillery, well, unlike helicopters, artillery can support um, more than one combat within the same phase. We're still in the same phase. So all the helicopters, they're out of this battle because they've all per helped in the one of the prior segments. But this artillery we're, will contribute, so that's um, a column shift back to the right in favor of the Russians. Um, I think that's all the column shifts, so let's allocate uh, combat support. There's no helicopters. Um, there's two air points left for the Russians. I, I think they're going to use them uh, since they're sort of attacking at a slight disadvantage, although, I mean, they got a, a big advantage in numbers. So uh, we'll go ahead and like, throw in our two air points here. And uh, we'll go ahead and roll to for air defense fire. Um, and it's at a minus one. I rolled a five, minus one, no effect. Um, that's it, yeah. So um, uh, die roll modifiers, well, these two air points giving um, a minus two to the Russians. I'm um, doing this off to the side. Uh, Let's see, what else we have? Um, I'm just kind of skimming through here. Oh, uh, we have, we're attacking from three or four hexes. So that's a another minus one for the Russians. And I don't think there are any other modifiers. Oh, uh, light infantry do get a modifier in a, uh, a city. Let's see, it says, Light infantry defending in non-flat slash non-flat woods slash city terrain. So this is flat, but it's also non-flat woods and it's city terrain. So I'm saying, I think they get the plus one. Uh, I may have missed that last turn or last combat. Um, so now the Russian die roll modifier is down to minus two. That's pretty good though. Uh, oh, multi-formation. Uh, the Russians are attacking with two formations. There's tons of units here, but most of them are white. So the Russians have a pretty flexible army here, apparently. So uh, we just have to pay um, a die roll modifier for the extra formation. That's one. So another minus one. All the same nationality. Okay. So uh, I think we're ready to roll. You know, I want to redo these odds. I think I made a mistake. Okay. So there's no odds shift for um, uh efficiency rating differential, but two for exploitation, one for the Russian artillery. Uh, I missed this, I think, two for a city. And I think that is it. So that four to one was so strong, but really the exploitation is what killed it. Um, so it's knocked down to 1.5. Also, I said the Russians have a minus one die modifier. Um, I forgot they have a remainder in their odds calculation, so they actually go up to minus two. So we're looking at a 1.5 to one on minus two. And by the way, the reason we're on this row is because it corresponds with flat. You can't quite see that in camera, but that's it. So let's do this. The Russians rolled a six. It's gonna be a, what did I say, a six minus two? So a six minus two. That's one one R. So each side takes a loss and then the defender has to retreat. Well, this is unfortunate. All these elite units are going down. Um, this guy takes a loss. Okay, now the defender has to retreat. Remember, he's gonna have to retreat um, one hex, but that hex is in an enemy zone of control. Uh, so I, they wanna they wanna try to not retreat. I have to pick the lowest efficiency unit. I guess it's because they're the ones more likely to have to retreat. So I need to roll a five or less. This is for the French. 
Oh, I've got a three. So they managed to hold them off another turn. But I think their days are numbered. It's going to be tough to reinforce that. Unless maybe we can pick off this guy. Okay, uh, that's all the exploitation combat the non-allied player wants to do. They could have attacked in Bialystok, but uh, with that two-column shift to the left for exploitation combat, uh, I think they're going to skip it. So the next segment in the initiative movement in combat phase is the reaction movement segment. That is where the non-initiative player, that would be the allies, um, can move uh, all their units to their extent of their movement as they like. Um, they can't do air, air mobile, or sea movement, um, but uh, you know that's not really necessary for this scenario anyway. Um, and then after they move, it's going to be reaction combat, so they can perform combats um, with no penalty. So um, I think what I want to do is uh, try to... You know, it's pretty risky, but try to keep Suwalki um, from being cut off with zones of control. So that means I'm probably going to move a unit out of Aleko and try to do some kind of attack to maybe push this guy back. Or this guy. This guy's a little weaker. Um, but there's a lot of nationalities around here. So there's Americans, French, Belgians, and Poles. I, kinda, oh, I'll, I can get a decent... Um, negative die roll modifier if I put too many together. Um, also, uh, these poles here, you know, I could have them stay here. Um, I could also have them fall back to elk. There are going to be reinforcements coming in, so maybe that's not that important, but um, after this reaction move in combat, the Russians are going to get to do another movement in another combat. Well, not sure what I want to do. Uh, I think maybe these guys here should pull out a little bit. Um, the flank of Augusto is guarded by a lake. So um, so maybe they want to pull out with a um, one into flat, but then it costs another one because they're exiting a zone of control. So that's two, uh, three movement points left. We'll just move along this road at half movement point and then add one for entering a zone of control. Okay, so they maneuver to get into an attack position against this guy, um, which is definitely not as tough as this guy here, who defensive four. Okay, next. Um, I think it'd be best to not mix too many nationalities, so I'm thinking like maybe the Americans will attack with the Poles, trying to knock this guy back. And maybe we'll throw some more Poles in there. Um, oops, so that would be a eight to or six to two, so three to one. If the Americans help, here we'll throw the Americans on top here. Um, yeah, six to two. So maybe we can get that up to four to one odds by moving this guy in. So he can, he's actually not in a zone of control. Zone of controls don't extend across a lake. So we'll just go half, one, um, two, and then three for the zone of control. Okay. And so that leaves a decent strength unit um, in Oleko. These guys, I'm considering pulling them back, but then these guys could just come right down here. So maybe they'll just, they'll just hang out there for a second. And uh, down south, um, they're not gonna, there's gonna be no movement. Okay, so the initial combat odds is four to one on the flat woods row. Um, I need to pick a lead unit. The Americans would get us a column shift if I pick them as the lead, but if they take a loss, that's going to leave uh, Suwalki even uh, in more dire straits. So I think we're going to have the Polish um, 15 GLZ. Hmm, I don't know what that stands for. It must be a, a town in Poland or something. Um, so th they'll be the lead unit, and then of course this guy has to be the only lead unit there, so there's no shift there. So we're still at 4 to 1. Uh, die roll modifiers, it looks like the only die roll modifier is um, more than one um, nationality attacking. Um, and that's plus one. NATO doesn't get the additional um, plus one for multi-formation attacks. Um, NATO's special in that way, I guess, because they train together a lot. So it's, it's a straight 4 to 1 odds, plus one die roll. 
got a five. I'm looking that up on the chart. Five plus one. That's a um, no losses for the attacker, one loss, and a retreat for the defender. And uh, the column, all the columns on the th three columns on the right of the chart, um, they're red. What that means is if the defender can't satisfy um, one of the items, they must take an additional loss. Okay. Okay, I got a five. Uh, looking up on the uh, the five row and then um, plus one. That's uh, no attacker losses, one defender loss, and a defender retreat. Uh, the, the three right columns on the chart, they're color-coded red. What that means is if the um, if the defender can't or the attacker can't satisfy like a loss or a retreat, then the other side gets to subtract a loss from their own side. Um, but uh, this guy can take a loss, um, so good job. Pulls and with a little American support, they're dead. Um, now, since since the, this area has been cleared, at least one attacker must advance, and. I believe the lead unit is required to advance. I'm going to just check that, double check that real quick. Oh, it's the attacker's choice who's going to advance. So um, I guess I, um, the Americans are not going to advance. So I have to decide to want to send a weaker guy in um, more easily to be more easily picked off, or the stronger guy. Um, also, since the area's been cleared out and it's not like certain rough terrain, uh, and these guys are mechanized, they it can take a, a second advance, and zones of control are ignored during the advance, so theoretically it could go back here, for example. And I think that would cut these guys off from supply during the supply phase, but they're going to still get another move. So yeah, it's a tough call. Um, I suppose it can advance like this, too. Um, and yeah, maybe they'll do that. So they got away from these guys. We got the zone of control out of here, so the Americans and French do have a nice little retreat path this way. Um, yeah, I think that worked out. I briefly wanted to show you the uh, standard game sequence of play. Standard game as opposed to the advanced game. So uh, we started down in here with initiative combat. This is the initiative movement and combat phase. Cruise down through here, um, elite reaction movement, exploitation movement. Exploitation combat, reaction movement, we just did reaction combat. Um, so this whole section it is for when one side has the initiative, which the uh, non-ally player does. So it's like a bonus attack and movement. When a side doesn't have the initiative, this is all you do. It's called the basic movement and combat um, phase. And... Uh, whether there's initiative or not, you always do this. So now we're just going to slide right down into here and it's going to be another movement for the initiative player, another combat, and then a chance for the non-initiative player to react. Okay, so what I think the movement for the non-allies is going to be is um, so they're really going to keep focusing on Suwal Suwalki. So uh, I think we're going to move this um, sort of recon unit. Uh, we want to put it here where that other unit was destroyed um, in order to get uh, zones of control back in here, though this guy will allow retreats. He can cover the retreat through the zone of control. Um, I believe that's true. Uh, but also to get, um, yeah, ba basically um, just to get a little more firepower onto this Hex. So we're going to go uh, 1 plus 1 for exiting a zone of control. And then 2 for entering woods and a plus 1 for entering a zone of control. So we still have plenty of movement. Now this guy, does he want to join him? Oh, you know what? Uh, since he was this guy started here stacked with a friend, he doesn't have to pay the penalty for leaving the zone of control. Like it was if this guy left and went in here, he wouldn't have to pay the penalty for entering the zone of control, though you still have to stop. And maybe we need to get like a big attack here. So we'll go um, one, two. It's clear plus an exiting zone of control. And then let's see, motorized into woods, it's two. So uh, three, four, and then they don't have to pay for entering. Okay, that's all we're gonna do there. 
Now let's go down south. And I think the Belarusians are going to just do a, a small maneuver. And I think what that's going to be is this guy's going to, he's got eight movement points, exit the zone of control. So you can't go from zone of control to zone of control. Um, well, you can if you spend all your movement. So I think he's going to go like this right there. The reason is I want to try to get three hexes is because you get an extra die roll bonus. Okay, now for the, uh, that was the first movement segment of the basic movement in combat phase. So now for the first combat segment. And I think these guys are going to take another track crack at Bialystok. Um, these artillery haven't been spent fully yet. And now that this is a new phase, um, the uh, Belarusian helicopters still have one mission remaining. So yeah, we'll start the battles here. So uh, here's here's the defenders. Here's the attackers. Everyone's attacking. We're gonna throw in the artillery here. So let's uh, figure out some odds. Well, um, light infantry defending in an urban area doubles. So this is nine defense. It's strong defense. The attack coming in is not that good. Uh, maybe they shouldn't be doing this. It's 9, 10, 11. So we're 11 to 9. That is 1 to 1 in urban terrain. It's not looking good on the chart, which I have off camera. Um, but each of these artilleries uh, shift it one to the right. So that brings it up through uh, 1.5 to 1 to 2 to 1. To pick some lead units, um, we'll go ahead and pick 6 west here. Um, the Americans are going to lead the defense. That's uh, The Americans have a two uh, advantage, so that's two column shifts to the left, back to one to one. Um, let's see, I'm kind of checking if there's any other column shifts. Uh, no, there's no column shifts for an urban area that's already taken into account with the column you start on, on the uh, combat results table. Now for air support. And uh, yeah, the Belarusians will send in their final uh, helicopter mission. There's no air points available, so that doesn't matter. Um, you know, the Americans still have a wounded Apache. I think they're going to save that for Suwalki because they're, they're guessing that's going to happen. Um, do they want to send in their um, Polish helicopter? You can only use one helicopter on the defense, so I, there's no point in saving it for Suwalki if I'm going to use the Apache. So, um, yeah, we'll go ahead and spend the Polish helicopter. And yeah, so we got one and one coming in. There's no air points for either side. So let's go ahead and do air defensive, air defense fire. Uh, how about the allies against the Belarusian helicopter? It's minus one again for being, for mechanized units being adjacent to the target hex or in the target hex. Oh, we got a two. 2 minus 1, that's a minus 1, so the helicopter had to turn back or got damaged, whatever. Um, now for the Belarusians trying to abort the Polish helicopters. Ooh, got a 1. Ooh, that's not going to be good. It's also a minus 1. So um, they subtract 2 from the attack strength. Okay, well, it's gone. And then the helicopter actually suffers a loss. So uh, we're flipping this guy over. And uh, let's see, what's the difference? There's no difference from the wounded versus non-wounded side. So I guess that's okay. Just lost lost one life, I guess. Okay, uh, die roll modifiers. Um, the attacker has three uh, hexes, so that's minus one. But then it's plus one for having an extra formation. That's zero. The defender has some light infantry, so that's minus one. Um, I feel like there's one more plus one. Oh, there's a remainder in the uh, odds calculation, so that's plus one. So the net is a straight zero. So that's a straight zero on the one to one column. So let's go see how this battle goes. Oh man, got a one. Feel bad for the allies. 
That's one attacker loss, two defender losses. Uh, lucky die roll really helps. So the lead Belarusian takes a loss there. The lead allied unit takes a loss. And then we have one more to, to lose. It's got to be the Poles, right? The Americans have much better strength defending in an urban area. They have a better efficiency rating. So unfortunately, the 18th Polish recon has been destroyed. Right, let's tidy this up and then we'll go check out the north. All right, who am I kidding? The only attack that's going to happen up here is another assault on Suwalki. So let's uh, check this out. Quite an array of Russian forces, but their uh, artillery's spent, so they can't get like a free shift out of that. Okay, let's calculate initial odds. Defenders are at 5, attackers are at 5, 10, 15, 20. 25, 28. So uh, I see that as a 5 to 1 with um, a remainder. And this is flat. 5 to 1 and flat. So that's f very far to the right on the uh, combat results table, which is good for the Russians. Lead units. I think the Russians will lead with this uh, mech unit here. That's a 6. The uh, allies will use the American 6, so that cancels out. Looks like there's no other shifts, is that right? No, there's a, a two shift left for attacking into a city. So that's good, it drops down to uh, three to one from five to one. And uh, I don't see any other shifts possible. Let's see, air support. Well, I mentioned the American Apache is gonna uh, try to drop in one point, so we'll do that. And then uh, the Russians have their um, two helicopters still intact, so they're spending the rest of their missions as well. And that was a total of three points, so um, I guess this will represent the two-pointer helicopter, this will pre represent the one-pointer helicopter. Do some air defensive fire, we'll start with the two-pointer Russian helicopter. Minus one for mech infantry in Suwalki. Got a five, um, nope, ineffective. Remember, the uh, Russians have the uh, advantage in the air, so um, it's much harder to knock their units out. We'll go for the one um, helicopter. Go to four, minus one, still doesn't matter. Okay, now the Russians firing at the Apache. Go to seven, minus one. Uh, yeah, so all those units are in there, so um, the net is two in favor of the Russians. So they're currently at minus three. Um, there's some light infantry depending, uh, defending, so we, we'll drop that by one. Um, there's more than one formation. There's one extra formation, so we'll drop it again. We're, the Russians now at minus one die roll modifier. And that might be it. Oh, there's a remainder in the odds calculation. Oh, I already covered that. Um, more than one hex. So we're at minus two. Sorry, when I say more than one hex, I mean there's at least three hexes. I think I screwed up the die roll modifiers, so let's check it out. Attacking for more than one hex, minus one. Uh, two combat support from helicopters, minus two, minus three. So a total of minus three. Um, there was an initial, or sorry, there was a odds uh, remainder. A remainder when calculating the odds, so that's minus four. So that's, that's great. Um, but the NATO has a light infantry, the French, so it drops back to minus three. And there's more than one formation. There's one extra formation, basically, so it drops to minus two. So maybe I did calculate the right, so minus two. Let's go ahead and do this. Oh, man, these die rolls. We rolled a two. Um, two minus two is zero. Oh, man. It's... Uh, no attacker losses, NATO loses two and retreats. So this is absolutely devastating. There's actually no way to hold the town. There's no way to save these units because it's two, lo two, two losses. They're already damaged. Man, maybe I should have not tried to hold Suwalki. I mean, I didn't count on so many good die rolls. So uh, the Russians must advance in here. Now, Suwalki, uh, even though 
there's no military units there. Um, it's assumed there's like, you know, militia, um, I don't know, units that don't warrant a counter on the board, but still have forces available. So they're going to essentially be keep defending Sawalki, almost like an insurgency or something. So um, the Russians still are going to have to spend some time trying to clear it. So I need to put enough units into Sawalki to see if we can uh, clear it in a certain amount of time. I haven't really looked at the charts to compute it, but um, I think what we'll do is we'll send these guys in. They're stacking values four, so yeah, they'll just come in here. And I need to draw from a, a random set of counters here, so I'm gonna blindly draw from here, a clearing marker. I got a three. I think that's fairly weak. Um, so essentially, uh, each turn the Russians are going to have to roll a die, and it's modified by like the forces they have in this town. Like the more forces, the better, to see if they can clear this town. So um, I think we're just going to start off with just these guys and see how it goes. I'm not really like thinking deeply or looking at the numbers. So we'll just. I feel like okay. A brigade and a half, it can clear this place. Uh, everyone else, they could advance. In fact, um, oh, but since it's a city, I, they can't do a double advance. So I was thinking like these guys can go like this, but I think they'll just they'll just chill out. Okay, so that was devastating for NATO. Okay, now it's the second movement segment. That's where the non-initiative player gets to move all units using any means they desire. And um, I'm not sure there's much to do here. Uh, we want to keep these defenses here. Um, these guys in the, that are clearing uh, Suvoki, um, they can't attack. They can defend, certainly. But so um, I think maybe the poles here are going to pull back here, so it'll be... One, two, because they're leaving a zone of control. It's an extra one. And then um, two and a half, and ignore the zone of control. Um, join that guy. Okay, just get a little more strength there. And I think that's their entire move. And they're not going to do any combat on the next phase, I don't think. And then these guys, you know, they're so weak. But they're going to hold, hold in Bialystok. So yeah, then we go to the second combat segment where those guys can attack if they so desire and I'm not going to do any attacks. So now it's the reorganization phase. So we're sort of in the end of the turn phases. Um, all helicopters and artillery rotate back to their normal position. I'll do that uh, throughout the map. Um, any unused air points are lost. Um, if air mobile points were used, which I haven't even talked about, but you get essentially helicopter assets and so on to move units around, um, those reset. Um, and then we conduct clearing operations. So let's uh, go up to Suvolki. Here we are. These Russians just uh, occupied Suvolki and they're, you know, going building to building, trying to clear clear this place out. So we can see there we have um, four stacking points worth of units and uh, five combat strength. I don't know if that matters. I'm going to figure this out on the fly. So let's go over to the uh, clearing operations chart. Okay, here we go. I moved the uh, units in the clearing marker over here. So um, first off, we need to check what the uh, minimum safe stacking points for the terrain is. The terrain's a city, so the minimum safe stacking points is three. So if for every point we are short by this three, um, we subtract from a die roll. And in this case, rolling low is bad. Um, well, our stacking points are four, so we're above three. We're good. No negatives there. Uh, we have to pick a lead unit to do the clearing operations with. And uh, we'll go ahead and pick this guy because he has the best efficiency rating. You subtract this. You subtract the uh, the strength of the defenses uh, from your efficiency. So six minus three is plus three. You can see that right here. So we're going to get a plus three to our die roll, which is huge. And uh, by the way, we're going to roll a die, and we need to roll three or more to clear the place. So this is an easy CD to clear. I could have made it a little easier if I had a leg unit plus an armor or mechanized. I only have motorized and mechanized, no leg. Um, 
and there's a bunch of other modifiers, but uh, we're just looking at a plus three for this one. Um, we should be able to get this. Rolled a nine, which is uh, overkill. So we've successfully cleared Suvalki. And then um, hex control changes happen right after clearing operations. So Suvalki is now Russian. So that's uh, two victory points um, for the Russians. Go ahead and put their units back. And then um, we'll go mix this back into the, the bag of clearing markers. Okay, now for the reinforcement and replacement phase. The first thing you do is both sides place reinforcements. The only reinforcements coming in uh, at the end of turn one are these two Polish uh, units, an air cav and an airborne unit, and a uh, Canadian, um, what is that, a battalion? Uh, so, yeah, and uh, the scenario special rules, basically they can reinforce to anywhere that air mobile landings are allowed that are not in enemy zones of control and in uh, this um, scenario that's basically anywhere <laughs> so um, let's go figure out where these guys are going to go uh, clearly we have some very nice uh, units obviously elite um, and the canadians as well um, so they're they're much smaller, but still have a decent defense. So let's find a place to put them. I think the most critical place here is Bialystok, which uh, is you know not much defense left. Fortunately, an urban area um, protects against enemy zones of control. So we want to put at least one good unit in here. Um, we'll go ahead and bring these Polish um, paratroopers in. Uh, the scenario specific rules say paratroopers could start off map and then do para drops to get onto the map, but uh, yeah, what's the point? So they're being you know flown in by helicopter, landing right into Bialystok, and uh, yeah, so that puts a bit of punch there. Um, trying to decide what else I want to do um, up north. Yeah, let's look at up north first. Maybe we'll come back here in a minute. The next turn, the Russians will still have the initiative, and um, so we'll get a lot more attacks and movements than NATO. So I'm reluctant to just put some like speed bumps like out here. Um, I think they will just get destroyed outright. Um, so I feel like, here, I'm just gonna set these here. One of these, at least one of these guys has to go up here. Um, Augusto is dangerous, dangerously undefended, but you know, maybe these poles can pull back. Maybe I should reinforce these poles. They're at max stacking without penalties though, so I don't necessarily want to stack more there. Um, Aleko here, and then Elk. Um, so maybe maybe we'll throw the Canadians here into Elk just to make sure no one makes a you know quick run at it. And then this 25th Air Cav. Um, I mean, I could put them in Augusto and then they can come they can go uh, south later and support Bialystok um, if needed. Um, maybe the Belgians in Aleko. I'm inclined to almost let Aleko fall and try to defend right through here. Um, but, you know, let the Bel Belgians try to hold out. Um, yeah, so I think we're going to put these guys into Augusto. Okay, now both sides spend replacement points to replace damaged or lost units. They all have one point right now, all nationalities. Um, there's not much that can be purchased with that. Uh, first of all, um, airborne type units cannot be replaced um, once they've been destroyed. So for example, the French were destroyed, they can't be replaced. Um, also, most things are uh, expensive. So mech units, they cost two replacement points while everyone's only got one. Um, so it looks like the only thing that could be replaced um, is the Russians could spend one point to um, heal a motorized division. So those only cost one to um, to replace um, into an existing unit, basically to buy a step back. Um, it can't be in his own control, so it can't be this guy here. Um, so the only options are these guys. And I assume they're identical, 3466, 3466. So um, yeah, how about we'll spend a Russian replacement point for this guy here. And it's not clear to me if both sides have replacement points. Who goes first? It seems like one side would get a benefit by waiting to see what, how the other person replaces. I think I would, um, yeah, I don't know. So it'd be nice to hear from the designer on that one. 
So yeah, that's it. So the Russians spent one replacement point and the Belarusians, Poles, NATO, and US are just saving theirs for next turn. The next phase is the victory determination phase. There is no victory. We're playing to the third turn and then we'll look at victory points. And then um, we move into the game record phase where we just advance the turn marker. So uh, that's turn one. I'm gonna try to figure out a way to speed up um, my recording of turn two. Maybe uh, you know a lot of this time was spent with the details of combat. I might be able to streamline that. So uh, anyway, um, keep an eye out for turn two, and thanks for watching.